Hi and welcome to my channel and this video. If you're new, my name is Sarah. And if you're not new, welcome back. Happy to have you back again. So this is a little bit different of a video than I've done on my channel before. Um, I'm gonna show you how I created um, our family stockings. I created these, no, I'm not gonna say created. I sewed them four or five years ago. I did not create the pattern for them. I got it from a blog called In My Own Style. I will link it down below because that, if you are interested in making these, that is where you want to go to get the detailed um, supplies list as well as the pattern for this stocking. Um, so <laughs> we had our surprise fifth baby at the beginning of 2020. And I say surprise because we were not expecting to have another baby. And when I made these stockings originally, I had made seven stockings, even though we were only a family of six. And you're probably thinking, well, if you had seven stockings, why do you need another one? Because obviously now you have a family of seven. That would be a good point. However, <laughs> when I thought, I just had um, enough of this type of fabric, I'm going to call it our fashion fabric, the pretty designed fabric. Uh, I had bought seven different patterns and as you can see on this one there's snowflakes on it and that's kind of the theme that I went with when I was creating them. I wanted something a little cohesive, something that looked nice all together so I went with a white base and then um, colored tops and I will show you the other stockings as well in just a second. Uh, so. I just happened to buy seven fashion fabric pieces. I decided why don't I just make all seven of them and then if the kids ever want to swap out stockings from year to year, they want to try a different one that year, they can do that. It hasn't actually happened. They've stuck with the same ones year after year. But that was kind of my thought process behind it. And then I all, I saw probably around that time from someone else on YouTube, her, YouTube, her name is Brighton from the channel Brighton My Life and I'm pretty sure it was her, she talked about how they have a stocking hung for Jesus and their kids can put little notes in there for him or little gifts and things like that and just to kind of keep him in their minds throughout the Christmas season. And so I thought, hey, we have a seventh stocking. Why don't we make that our Jesus stocking? So now that is our Jesus stocking and I, the kids look forward to getting out the Jesus stocking every year. How much they actually put in there, I don't know. I don't check or anything like that. That's just between them and what they want to do. But they do ask about the Jesus stocking every year when we pull out the stocking. So I know I can't just repurpose that seventh stocking for our baby. I needed to make a new one. My goal, my intention was last year in 2019, I went to Joann's. I got fashion fabric to make a stocking and my intention was to make it at some point throughout 2020 and not wait until the Christmas season and feel rushed and overwhelmed with everything else and then having to make a stocking on top of it and as you can see how well that turned out right <laughs> so here we are a few days before Christmas and I'm making the stocking it's okay though we'll get it done and you're gonna help me do it so like I said I used the pattern from that blog. It will be linked down below. The, uh, something to note about it is they are not the biggest stockings. The pattern piece made it look bigger to me and even though I sew, I mean it's been a while, but I do sew, I understand the basic concepts of sewing. It didn't even dawn on me for some reason that oh some of this this size is going to be taken up by seam allowance and therefore it's actually not going to be that big. So it turned out skinnier than I thought, although it's worked out well in our favor because now that especially that we have to fit eight stockings across a single mantle, uh, they fit a lot better than if the stockings were much wider. It just does make it a little tricky if you're, what you're trying to put inside. It, it gets, <laughs> it gets a little hard doing that, but for us, I typically don't fill the stockings till the night before and sometimes if it's just something too big I'll just put it up right next to the stocking holder on the mantle that gift and then just above the stocking there so I've made it work um, that's just something that I remember thinking when I was making these thinking oh the pattern these are gonna be great sizes and then 
finishing and going, oh, it's not as big as I thought. And especially every year that I'm trying to shove things down into it, I'm like, oh, it's not quite as big as I thought, but it it's fine. It'll all work out. And they turned out really nice. So I do follow her pattern that I do make. There is a difference though of where she puts this little holder and where I put it, she just attached it to the inside seam on the stocking. I didn't like that so much, so I um, figured out how to get it to come out of the top seam. And I, just, I don't know, I just like how that looks better. I think it looks a little cleaner. Uh, there is no liner on the inside. You could absolutely put another piece of fabric in there and make a liner. And I will try to remember to talk about like where in the step process you would actually do that um, and it would not be a big deal to do, to uh, put a liner in there. I haven't felt a need to have a liner. I mean it's just a stocking. It's just for a month of the year and it works out just fine like this. So I will I will talk about that. I will talk about this set differently from what she has because she has instructions on her blog how she explains it on there and I just thought the reason why I'm doing this even though she has the instructions and she has some pictures on her blog sometimes I feel like it's easier with sewing to have someone walk you through things step by step and show you at the same time instead of trying to read it and even if, like I said if there's a picture there sometimes it's a little confusing um, and especially if you do try to do the liner and with this um, just lining it all up and it's been a little while since I've done it, but I'm trying to remember myself, but we'll get there. Okay, I think for the most part, that is it. Oh, one disclaimer. I'm assuming you already know basic sewing skills uh, before you're starting this video, if you're trying to make a stocking with me. Uh, so you just, you understand the basics. So I'm not gonna be walking you through you know how to thread the needle and different things like that I'm gonna assume you know just you know how to get around the sewing room if you will you know just the basics um, so if you're looking for a more of a how to you know how to learn to sew or something like that I'm not gonna have that in here but if there's any tips related to this I will absolutely share that with you to try to make it as easy as possible so let's go over the materials that you should have in order to make this stocking. So what I chose to do was get this like quilted, this white quilted fabric as you saw for the base of the stocking. You could absolutely choose a different type of base if you want something different, if you would rather have the pattern be down here and then like a white, even like a white fur or something like that up there, you could do that. This is just the style that I chose to work with. Uh, I. I don't know I just really liked how it looked <laughs> so you need something for the base like this if you were going to do a liner I would choose a very lightweight cotton um, a muslin something that will not bulk up the inside of the stocking but will give you the liner that you're looking for and then you'd be able to hide the seams then like I said you're gonna need some fashion fabric and did I already mention this I can't remember when I went last year I didn't just pick up one I actually picked up seven different ones because I just couldn't decide and I figure this way the kids have a chance to pick another one if they wanted to or to switch out like my original plan was so again it's all snowflakes I did a lot of the gray and silver I just really like silver and then one of these, so one of these is going to turn into the baby's stocking. I'm assuming it's probably going to be this glittery one or this one. My kids really wanted a purple colored one and I don't know, they just, they want her color because all my kids have a color that they're associated with in our family. It just really helps us to keep track of certain things. Hers is going to be purple, they've decided, and so they wanted her to have a purple top to her stocking which I did not buy because at the time we didn't have that established already so anyhow she's gonna get one of these and if somewhere down the line she wants a purple one or a different one I can try and see if they have something with a snowflake pattern obviously you're gonna want some thread I go with the white thread because of it's gonna match this I do and it's going to also, for this embellishment here, 
it's going to blend right in. I also do top stitching, if you can see there, and I just keep it all my top stitching white. So there's top stitching on the handle, there's top stitching on the top here, and I don't, no, I did not do any on the bottom here. Um, so that's the main top stitching and then also here. So I just kept it white for everything and I think it turned out really nice. And it just keeps, the top stitching just gives it a really nice crisp look um, and also helps to keep this cuff down. It, I don't know, it just, it really <laughs> defines that top. And I don't believe this is something she talked about on the blog was doing the top stitching. And any little thing like that, will give it a more professional look to it. So it's extra work, but it really looks nice in my opinion. <laughs> and then the last thing is if you want any type of embellishment, garland, something um, to put on the bottom, like, uh, what's it called? Brick rack? Brick a rack? Someone correct me. Um, you know, the zigzaggy ones. Uh, if you wanted to do something like that, you could do more than one. I just chose to do these little balls. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. So besides basic sewing tools, this is like the supplies you need, the materials. One tool though I do want to point out that is kind of a must have is an ironing board and an iron. If you really want it to have that professional look, you need to spend time at your ironing board. I think it's like half of your sewing time is actually spent at your ironing board. It really truly does double your time to make a project. However, it gives it that crisp professional look when you take the time to um, press out your seams and just just really focus on that crispness. It, it adds a whole nother level to it. My mom, when she taught me how to sew, would always skip the ironing part because she just didn't want to take the time to do it. Cause like I said, it does add like twice as much time to the project, but it makes a world of difference. So do not skip that. If you want it to look, you know, really nice, don't skip the ironing. So here I have the pattern from the website. She, you print it off on three pieces of paper and then you attach it. There's like black X's that you attach each one to after you've cut it out and then tape it. And so that is the main stocking pattern. And then for the rest of it, she just tells you the dimensions of the paper that you need to cut in order for the cuff and then also for the strap handle hanger thing. <laughs> um, so she tells you an 11 by 14 for the cuff. And I actually re I measured um, and I have a 12 inch by about 15 and a half inches. So that's what I used on mine. For some reason I decided that was the size I needed. And I realized later, <laughs> you don't actually have to draw out this whole thing. So you only need half of one length. So you can do your 12 inch and then half of 15, so what is that, 17 and 3 quarters, 15 and a half that is, 17 and 3 quarters, is that right? That's right, right? Whatever half of 15 and a half is, that's how far you need here. Now it's going to bother me. 7, yes, right about 7 and 3 quarters. Uh, because you fold your fashion fabric and cut out twice as much and you only need to have, you just need to make sure you mark that this goes on the fold, which I should probably do right now. You just need to make sure you know that it's one side is going to be on the fold so you don't cut that part. And then that way when you open up your fashion fabric, there you go. Um, you can do the same for the, this piece for the hanger portion. And I already measured this and I've already forgotten what it was, but it's different than what she listed also. Okay, so she said a six by three inch, mine is a nine by two inch. So again, that's just what, for some reason, I adjusted her pattern pieces. I kept the main body the same, but then these pieces I adjusted to be different because that's what I wanted at the time. And since I'm keeping them the same, that's what we're gonna go with. All right, so my main body of the stocking is folded in half on top of each other 
And I'm just gonna line up my pattern on here and get cutting. I'm gonna cut at least seven sets because that's what I have for fashion fabric. If I can do more than that, I might, just in case I find more fabric later, it'll just be one less step I have to do. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. So if you couldn't tell, I'm struggling with this pattern because it has um, lines in it. It looks like a wood background, a gray wood background, like wooden slats. And it is not cut straight according to the grain. Um, and so it's gonna be noticeable if I cut it, how I've been doing all the other ones, which those ones didn't matter because they didn't have a line pattern to it where this one does. And on top of that, so this is something you have to be careful with when you pick out your fashion fabric. Um, on top of that, if I cut it the same direction as these ones, I believe, I'm trying in my head to visualize this, um, that the wood slats are gonna go vertical and I want them to go horizontal. So I'm trying to make sure I cut it correctly so that the wood slats will show up horizontally um, when you're looking at the stocking which means I may have to sew this one differently because I'm gonna have to cut it differently. That's what I'm thinking at this point. So right now I'm just trying to line it up so that it is actually straight. So I'm, I can just barely see through the pattern and I'm folding on one of the lines that goes all the way across the fabric. So it, you can, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of cockeyed. This top layer is off the, oh, you can't really see there. The top layer over here is off the bottom layer. Um, it hangs over and then the bottom layer is jutting out over here, which I don't think you can see. Let me see if I, it's jutting out above the top layer. But that means it's squared, it's lined up when it's like that. So normally I would have cut it like this. However, then it's gonna follow the line and not have enough on the bottom layer because I'm following the top layer. And if I do that, because it's going, and the reason why I've been folding all these like this is because this is how I'm eventually going to be sewing them. Um, so right sides together, and this is how it's going to look on the stocking once it gets all sewn and everything. So if that's the case, I need to, I think get through it again. All right, so I've thought it through, and there is no way 
with it this direction that, and folding it or not folding it even that I will be able to get the wooden slats horizontal like I want. I should have, <laughs> that's brilliant on my pregnancy brain last year, should have bought more a wider width of fabric for this one because it had the pattern but I wasn't even thinking. Um, like I said, it's been a number of years since I've made these. So I know I didn't say this earlier when I was explaining the supplies. Maybe I would have written it on the screen though. I got a third of a yard of each of these fabrics. So it's 12 inches, which is exactly what I needed for my pattern. Uh, but for this one, I should have gotten the 15 and a half inches minimum, which would have been, I guess I would have had to have gotten half a yard if I wanted to cut everything the same way that I've been cutting it. So, um, like I said, I'm going to have to do a little finagling here, sew it a little differently. So I'm going to cut it. Um, and I figured it out just a second ago. I'm going to have to cut it a piece here and another piece there and then two more. <laughs> We're going to use a lot of this. And then I'm actually going to have two seams on the back instead of one. So I'm basically extending my fabric on my own. I'm going to attach it to attach it. One of the seams is basically going to be an extension of it. And then, um, then the, there will be the other seam that would have normally been there, but instead of being dead center in the back, it's gonna, they're going to be off centered from each other. Cause I need that extra three and a half inches that I don't have. So no one's going to be able to tell cause it's going to be in the back from when the stocking is hanging up, it should look fine and it should get the pattern the way I want it. So that's how I'm going to have to cut this one. Okay, so actually I'll have to do two cuts. I was just thinking why I'm gonna run out of fabric here, but let's not forget this is gonna get folded in half this way. So I really just need two pieces like this sewn together and then trimmed down to the correct size. And in case you couldn't see the pattern before, you see those lines, that's what my holdup was. <laughs> So now I will end up sewing these together, getting a seam there, flattening it, and then I'll trim off whatever excess I don't need. Um, but I will do that after I sew these together because at this point I'm not sure exactly what my seam allowance is going to be. So after I figure out what my seam allowance is, get it all squared away, and then I'll cut off the excess. So I'm just going to leave it as is for now. And just know that I have an extra step on this one to finish off this cuff before I put it in the pile with all the others. <laughs> well, it's quite a bit later. Um, I can't tell you how long I just spent sewing up the first one. I wanted to do a complete one and make sure that I remembered all the ways of how I needed to do this since I I have the written directions from that blog, but since I did things a little differently, um, measurement wise and things like that, I just remember I did things differently than she did. So I wanted to go through it once so that I could remember, remember all of that and let you know everything. And I've already did one thing wrong that I told you. I said that I, you fold them these way, this way, cause that's the way you're gonna sew it. No, it's not actually, you're gonna sew it the other way. So that's already one thing that I told you wrong. Uh, you're gonna show, sew the shorter end together. Uh, so that's one thing I told you wrong. And then so other things that I just forgot how to do, like the handle here, I forgot how I did it. And then I remembered it and I was like, oh yeah, that was the smarter way to do it. So I'm glad I did this first so that I can tell you all the correct ways to do things, at least according to how I do it. Um, but I think it turned out really nicely. It's really pretty. And uh, the only decorative stitch besides putting on the, you know, fun stuff down here is actually the top stitch on this top one and then maybe one of the top stitches on this because the other one is actually a structural stitch even though it looks like it's just a top stitch. So uh, it 
I, it just adds to it. But uh, I just wanted to point that out too because I said, oh, the top stitching on this, but one is a structural one. Okay, so I have gone ahead and just roughly pinned one side of my stockings here. That's just to help me get started on it. And then it holds together pretty easily because it's the fabric sticks kind of to each other. So uh, it doesn't slide around. So I don't need to pin the whole thing. Just make sure that you have your um, pattern side pieces together, the right sides together when you're doing this because it will get flipped inside out and I am using a 5 8 seam allowance. So I'm going to sew up seven of these now, and then we'll move on to the next step. Now that all the stockings are sewn, I'm gonna sew the cuffs uh, just cause I'm here and I'm doing it. And then that way I can, the next step is gonna be to iron things before I sew again. So I'm trying to get all the stuff done that needs to be sewed before ironing. Then we'll work on ironing and then come back to sewing more. That's just kind of how I streamline it. <laughs> um, and I need to figure out this wacky piece, how exactly I'm supposed to, um, sew this one together. <laughs> so let me take a minute to do that. I went ahead and um, ironed, pressed the seam flat just to make sure I have the right, you know, everything, the, that it's the right size. Because um, if you don't do that, then you're going to get some extra fabric. This is pushing it flat, so it's like it's it's, on, it's one piece. I hope that makes sense. Anyhow, I decided I'm just going to use the pattern piece because that makes sense, right? And measure it out that way. So now I'm going to fold it this way on itself and do another seam this way on all of the pieces like this. So not this skinny way like I was showing you, but fold it this way. So not hamburger, oh no, hot dog style, um, the other way. So now I'm going to do that to all of these pieces. And these have a 3 8 seam allowance. Uh, so different than the body of the stocking that was 5 eighths, this is a 3 eighths. And that is important to do it that way because otherwise it will not line up when you try to match them. Now that all of these are sewn, uh, I'm going to do the easy part for the ironing, ironing next, which is going to include pre pressing the seam open, turning them so the right side is out, but so that it actually start, looks like the cuff, so it's folded in half with the right side out and right side on the inside, and then with the seam in the middle of the back, I'm going to press it on the sides flat and that's all I'm going to do for the cuffs. So I'll do that with each of the cuffs. With the stocking bodies I'm going to press open just the top part on each seam and then I will flip these inside out 
and press them flat. Uh, the reason why I only do the top part of the seam is because the bottom part really doesn't matter. Um, but I do like having the seam open uh, in the final stocking so it's flat there and not bulky by all being on pushed to one side or the other. So I am going to do that with each of the bodies and then we will get to the most technical part, I think, of the entire stocking, which is the little handle thing because we have to iron it, fold it, like we have to fold it and iron it so that it's folded how we want it to be and ironed, stain how we want it to be, and then we top stitch it to sew it closed. So we're gonna leave that part for the very end. Right now we're just gonna do the other parts. <laughs> It's actually the next day. I could not finish making the stockings all last night. It was dinner time and that's just how it was. But I did get some helpers. I don't know if you could tell. Um, they, One of my daughters helped to flip all of the cuffs the right way for me and then also she flipped all the stockings for me. So that was a huge help because that can take some time. So I was just doing the ironing for those. So that's why you didn't see me flipping any of the stockings inside out because she or right side out because she did that for me. So now, like I said, this is the more technical part. We're going to work on the handle part. Um, so I'm gonna show you close up what to do, but I guess I'll just quickly right now talk about what to do. So you're going to iron this into the shape, I guess, if you will, that you want. So it's going to end up being a half inch strip. And to get it to be the half inch strip, you're going to fold in almost half an inch on one side, fold in almost half an inch on the other side, and then fold them those two sides together. And then you'll get this really nice seam that is not, that is going to be top stitched to hold it together. Um, so it'll look nice. And then you just top stitch the other side to match. And so it's two top stitches, but it makes it look like it's a seam that was folded um, almost as if you had put the right sides together sewn down it and flipped it inside out. It's that type of seam look, um, but you didn't do that. And because this would be extremely hard, it's very narrow to try to flip right side out um, if you were to do it like a regular way. So we're gonna do that. And the reason why I say you almost fold it a half inch on each side for those initial folds is because 
it gives you a little bit more room for um, folding it together at the end. If you don't do that, I found that it was harder to do that final fold. So you get really close to that half inch mark, but not quite there. So let me show you how to do that. It can be tricky because if you're using steam on your iron and maybe you might want to turn it off for this part, um, it can get very hot and burn your fingers. So be careful with that. Um, maybe turn the steam off on your iron, uh, but I'm going to do that with the six remaining strap things that I have and then well I, I think we'll be heading back to the sewing machine after that. In case you're wondering why I'm using this cloth for this particular fabric, it's because whatever they use to put the design on this um, fabric, it sticks to the heat of the iron. So in, I'm using something in between so that the iron won't stick to this stuff um, and just transfer the heat instead. And I put this one away also for a second there because it was just too hot to handle. I need the steam on. Um, they just weren't staying as well as I would like them to without the steam on, but means that they can be pretty hot to the touch. So now I am going to top stitch on either side of this. I tend to do the folded side first, so the more decorative side, and then the one for the structural support, I do that one second. I just feel like that squishes the folded side down well, and then it can squish out, you can kind of squish out any excess air or whatever. I mean, you're not going to squish out air, but I hope that that kind of makes sense. Um, I just go from the folded side first and then I do the structural open side to close it. And I just try to get as close to the edge as possible. I line up first, well for this folded edge, I switch my needle to be off center uh, and that helps me with how I line it up under the foot. And then I switch it back to center when I go and do the other side with for the open end. That's just how it works well for me. So you just have to kind of figure out what you are going to eyeball and light it up to on your own machine and what works best for you. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. is how it looks so it closed the end but it also made it look really nice and crisp just gives adds that extra professional look to it so now the last thing I'm gonna do while I have this one is actually just baste it how I want it to look when I put it on the stocking so let me remember how I did this last time um, So if it is long like this, I'm going to take the further end from you, pull it down. So you see how my thumb is on the top here? I'm pulling it down and rotating it. So my thumb is still on the top. I just rotated the strap to make it like that. I hope that makes sense. You can really do it however you want. This is just how I did it for all the other ones, so I want them to match, but it's not like 
not doing that, if that makes sense. I don't know. This is a hard one for me to explain. So it ha almost has a slight twist to it, but it doesn't at the same time. Let me see. Put it down on here. Did that make any more sense to you? Well, I match up this bottom front corner right here to the bot the same corner down here and then I just have it at an angle. So I make a little triangle there and I'm going to baste right there just to hold it in place until I get it secured in the stocking. And then it can also get flipped out that way if you'd rather it look that way. I like how this one look way looks. And then I also have the seam, the open seam towards the back that way if I have it attached like this. All right, it's actually a while later. Um, I, my memory card ran out of space, so I had to dump stuff onto my computer and then just life happened. Anyhow, what the next thing is, is to attach whatever decorative type thing you might want. Um, I have these little palms onto your stocking cup and just make sure that the unfinished edge is at the top there's a hair and you're attaching wherever you attach if you want to go towards the bottom this is where the stocking body is going to be is down here with the finished edge so just make sure you're aware of that so I am going to I like to start at the back normally where the seam is in the middle remember this one has the double seam but I like to start in the back and end in the back um, that way you get the you don't have an edge at all with this it tends to kind of blend together fairly well so I don't have to worry about it too much but I just like to keep everything in the back because you're not gonna see it as much um, when the stocking is you know being hung so I also like to have a little bit of space uh, between the edge of the trim and the edge of the stocking. So I just kind of eyeball it for the most part and I want the balls to be below the finished edge and then a little bit of fabric, fashion fabric, and then you see the trim. Um, so I do line up the fashion fabric to, I think it's the 3 8 mark on my sewing machine and then I just try to keep this part of the trim sorry I'm trying to focus it <laughs> this white part of this trim the band I just try to keep that as center as center in the foot of my machine as possible and that kind of gives me the right amount of the fashion fabric showing underneath this so that's what we're gonna do next and then I think we are assembling. Now we're going to assemble everything together. Uh, so for your main stocking body here, 
figure out which direction you want the stocking to go. I have all of mine hanging with the boot going down towards the left, the toe part of the boot that is hanging down towards the left. So this is my like front side. So, oh, this is where if you have a liner for your stocking. So to do the liner, all you're gonna do is the same pattern, two pieces of this, sew it together the same way and have the right side so that you want the wrong side on the outside. And that will actually be your first thing that you wanna put inside here. So you'll have wrong sides together, right side is the inside. So you'll stuff that liner in now. Then you're gonna take your handle and I like to just trim off the extra little bits. Oh, something I, from the basting, that is the extra little bits from the basting, just so they don't get in the way. One thing I forgot to mention on this, this was 15 inches long uh, to fit all the way around. So I just wanted to say something about that too. Okay, so you're gonna take your handle. I want mine with the left side in front. So I put it how I want it to be in the end and then you flip it down and this is how you're going to attach it to the stocking initially okay so if I had a liner I would have it inside and then I'm gonna put this where I want it positioned and mine I have about one and a half inches so actually I'm gonna mark it first one and a half inches away from this right hand seam so I'm just gonna mark that I have some disappearing ink so it's, it's actually a teeny bit more than one and a half inches, maybe one and five eighths. So I'm just gonna put a little dot there where I want the very rightmost edge of my hanger to be. So again, I want this left, let me double check this. Maybe it's this one, this way. I think it's this way. <laughs> yes, I want it to look this way. This is the way I want it to be at the end. So I'm gonna flip it down like this. I'm going to next line it up so that the rightmost side of the hanger is right next to my dot. And I'm going to also get it flat. I, I was having trouble with this. I've actually already sewn all the other ones that I was doing while I was waiting for the memory card to download or upload, whatever you want to say, to my computer. And I was having a hard time figuring out the best way to line this up. But I think if what is now the back part of the strap, if that edge is kind of flat with the edge of the stocking, I hope that makes sense. And then the other, the right hand side is going to be kind of jutting off a little bit. That's how you want it. And I'm going to pin this in place because if you, it's going to get flipped up like this. So that's how it will look. Or you can just kind of do it any old way you want. I guess mine, it's not totally flat. I see a little bit and we'll see. Again, I tried so many different ways and I can never figure out which one it was. Any way it's gonna go, it's gonna be fine. Then I'm gonna Hold it in place and do it from the back side here. And I do it kind of far away from the edge because, oh, sorry, pin in my mouth, sorry. Um, that way I don't have to take the pins out as I'm sewing and I can just leave them in. So I just have one for each strap. And that's kind of how it looks like the angle on the inside that I'm doing. Okay, so now that that is in there, remember if you had the liner, the liner would be first, then the hanger, and then last you're gonna do your cuff, and your cuff is gonna go just like this inside it. So you want the right side of the cuff against the wrong side of the stocking, or it'll be against the right side of the liner. I hope that makes sense. So. You're just gonna put it straight in like this. And again, my boots, the toes go off to the left. So this is the back, the back with the seams, same, same side. So 
This is the front part of the cuff, front of the stocking, back of the cuff, back of the stocking. I also found that if, because I'm not going to pin this, I mean you could, you absolutely could pin it in place and sew that way, but I, that's one step I tend to take out if I can. Um, if you have this cuff down a little bit from the stocking, it's easier to pull the cuff out as you go along versus trying to stuff it back in if you're trying, if you're having to line it up again. Um, so if it has to be one way, I would put the stuff, stuff, huh, I would put the cuff down a little bit below the edge of the stocking just because that I found that to be easier to pull the cuff out versus going the other way. And then I do line up my crease from my cuff with the center of each of the seams on the side. I don't worry too much about it. What I do try to focus on is my, if this is the front of the stocking, so this seam over here, I work on this to where the handle is. And then normally there's a seam like right here in the back on the cuff that is. And that's where I start my stitching because if there's gonna be any excess that puckers or anything like that, again, I want it to be on the back, not on the front. So I start at the back where the back seam typically is for uh, the cuff, which I may still start at a back seam or I may just start in the middle here for this one because again, it's my odd one. But to get started, I line up the cuff from this seam, like I said, just to where that seam would be on the back of the stocking and that's what I focus on first. And then I line up the rest as I go. So then I'm gonna put it on here and this is a half inch seam allowance. So let me get that in there. And then as I go, I just make sure that I'm pulling on both, making sure that I'm pulling out the cuff as need be. You're gonna see the cuff a little bit more right here because um, just of how the stocking lined up when I sewed it together, the two pieces of the stocking body. Um, so this side, this back side is a little bit shorter. So I'm going to use my cuff as my marker for my half inch seam allowance. And then when I get to the front, it'll even out a little bit more. Um, it, they, go together. If you hear kids screaming in the background, they're playing with dad downstairs. Don't worry about it, okay? So, and then when you get to the side seam, you should be matching up with that uh, crease that you made in the cuff uh, from ironing. It should match up fairly well. And again, if there's anything, any excess for some reason, the puckering will move to the back. So then it won't be seen. All right, so we're gonna get started sewing this together now. funny. This is the first one I actually did have a little bit of puckering on. None of the other ones did, but that's what I'm talking about. The cuff is going to cover this too anyways, so it's not a big deal, but I just like to have that in the back. And in case you're wondering about um, the handle, how if that's going to be enough of a stitch, don't worry about that. If you are doing the top stitching at the end, that'll give you extra strength, but otherwise you could go back and forth over this if you needed to, if you felt like it, but I have had zero problems with having this seam and then the top stitching holding the stockings just fine with stuff in them. All right, so now let's do the big reveal on flipping everything out so you can see what it looks like. So you pull out the cuff and then you're gonna Sorry, let me get that on camera. <laughs> then I'm gonna plop it down the other side. And out comes your handle. And you would leave, if you had the liner, you would leave that on the inside. Just as it is.
So you just get your seams to the sides. And when I do this, I like to keep, I don't try to, you can cut off any extra little pieces that you may find, obviously. I like to keep the um, fashion fabric slightly higher than the um, stocking body on the inside so that it you don't see it when it's folded like this I don't want it to be a seam that is I guess even if you if you want to call it that so I don't know if you can tell how it's slightly in from the fat from the outside it's not all the way at the top I try to make sure that it stays a little bit under you know inside more and the fashion fabric folds over a little bit more sorry I see a I see a thread all right we are almost done next we're just gonna press this with the iron and then we're gonna top stitch and then it's all done but there's your handle and I think it turned out really nice so let's finish it up. Again, I am going to start from the back, typically where the back seam is on the cuff, to start my top stitching. Again, it's just in case there is any puckering or anything. Um, and I line up so that I'm my fashion, my cuff edge is right like where this hole is on the foot the most right hand part of it and I just kind of make sure that the edge stays lined up with the rightmost part of this oval shaped hole and that's about how far over I am on my stitch I don't know about that might be it might be three sixteenths of an inch if I had to guess, that's probably what it would be. That's about that. So three sixteenths of an inch. Um, I just kind of eyeball it again. And this is the fun part because it's almost done. So let's finish it up. That was so anticlimactic. My thread got all tangled up and I had to just rip it out. This That little seam. All right, now here we go. Before I forget too, one thing I will note is when you get to the side seams on the stocking, I would stop and just make sure that it's lying flat so that um, it doesn't bunch up on you so it stays open is what I'm trying to say. Just make sure that it's open when you get to it so it doesn't fold in on itself. top stitched. And here they all are. Like I said, I already did the rest of these um, while I was waiting for the memory card to uh, dump onto my computer, but they turned out really nice. We did it. <laughs> They're finished. Oh. It took a lot longer than I thought. Granted, I was making seven of them slash eight because I had that extra uh, stocking base. I hope, I hope that I was clear enough for you in telling you all the different steps and what you needed and all of that. I will put as much information as I can down in the description box below. Again, it's not my pattern. I just made adjustments to it. So I will definitely put in your own styles blog post link down below so you can find the original and um, get all of her information as well uh, and then I will put adjustments that I made and my steps hopefully <laughs> I'll type those up for you and you can get those down in the description box as well 
I hope you enjoyed this. Um, let me know if you end up making one of these and um, what you used, like if did you do it like mine where it's the white base with the fashion fabric on the top or did you do something completely different? How many of them did you make? Because now I have officially made 14 of them in my life <laughs> and potentially I'm gonna be making another one at some point. But I think, I think my career for making stockings is going to come to a close after this, at least for the foreseeable future. <sighs> so thank you for joining me. I hope whatever stockings you ended up making bring you joy and that you just smile every time you see them like I do whenever I see mine hanging up every single year. If you'd like to see more from me, you can hit the subscribe button. I do not do a lot of DIY type stuff yet on my channel and I don't know that I'm going to be so if that's what you're looking for you may, you may not want to subscribe but um, I do a lot more with homeschooling and um, just mom life and different things like that so and camping we do camping and I have some videos on that as well so if if any of that is also your cup of tea then feel please feel free to subscribe but if you like the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. It lets me know that um, if there's something like this again in the future that I could share with you, that I will try to make an effort to do so. So I hope you have a very Merry Christmas, a wonderful New Year, and I will maybe hopefully see you in my next video. Bye.